Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice game from round one of the American Cup, uh, uh, definitely not 1985, it's actually 2023, uh, let me just fix that real quickly, there we go, uh, yeah it's from the first round of the American Cup, uh, eight very very strong grandmasters are playing uh, Hikaru here, Samuel Sevian, uh, Fabiano is playing, uh, Wesley So is playing, Dominguez, Perez is playing, um, uh, Ray Robson is playing, uh, so uh, I, I think I covered it all, yeah, and Le Levon Aronian. And uh, uh, they will play two classical games, and only if the two classical games are drawn, they're going to go into tiebreaks, then they're going to play Rapids uh, and Armageddons. And it's uh, quite a beautiful game, uh, uh, definitely a nice positional squeeze, so for those of you who enjoyed that, you will really enjoy this one. And also, if you want, uh, there is a link in the description below. First thing you will see, it's uh, an interview with uh, uh, former world champion Gary Kasparov. Uh, regarding the upcoming World Chess Championship match between Ding Lir and Yanni Pomnesi, where Kasparov says, as it says in the quote above the board, that the match between Nepo and Ding is a great show anyway, but it's not a World Chess Championship match, because you can't have a World Chess Championship match without um, the strongest chess player in the world being uh, actually present in the in the match. He says, okay, it's going to be a nice one, but, um, you know, not really. And he says it's a very different situation than um, in 1975 when Fischer decided not to play chess ever again then okay Karpov uh, uh, was awarded the world chess championship title uh, but Fischer never played chess again Magnus is very active in his um, uh, goals of, of playing chess he even wants to achieve a 2900 rating uh, and he plays pretty much every tournament uh, he can get and he plays pretty much every chance he can get he plays like a 200 bullet games uh, online uh, you know after uh, when he comes home at night uh, so it's a very different situation. Okay, if you want to check it out, first link in the description below. He also talks about some other stuff like uh, Alireza going into fashion and okay, so it's, it's some 14 minutes. Uh, you, you feel free to check it out. But now let's return to the game and 90 minutes uh, is, the, is the time format. Then you get additional time. So let's uh, check it out. A very nice uh, classical uh, event. Uh, so Hikaru with the white pieces opens with pawn to e4. We have pawn to e5, knight f3, knight to c6, and bishop to b5. The Rui Lopez is on the board. We have a6, Morphe's defense, bishop to a4, knight to f6, and now pawn to d3. Castles is the main move here. Hikaru already going a little bit crazy here with the only the second most popular uh, reply, pawn to d3. We have d6, Pawn to c4, now going for the Duras variation, uh, stopping b5 and also keeping an eye on that d5 square. Bishop to g4 by Samuel and now h3. Samuel trades here, captures, captures, and now knight to d7. The knight can now be shifted to c5 to put pressure on the bishop. Bishop to e3, covering c5, and now bishop to e7. We have knight to c3, knight to f8, and now we have knight to e2. There are some games where knight to d5 was played, also b4 is definitely a move you could consider consider here as the knight is pinned, uh, but Hikaru goes knight to e2, and it is now as of move 11 that we have a completely new game. So okay, knight to e6, the knight now has access to d4 and... Um... Uh, and f4 and also uh, seems to be stopping d4 but not really this is now the moment to execute d4 while the c6 knight is still pinned so d4 by hikaru e captures we have knight captures knight ca uh, knight captures bishop captures and now uh, samuel just castles here uh, and uh, you might think okay now hikaru has the bishop pair he's probably gonna castle gonna put pressure on the black king maybe the bishop is coming to this diagonal maybe the bishop is coming to this diagonal uh, but no hikaru actually plays bishop captures and c6 and this will be crucial uh, in the uh, continuation of the game. It, it, uh, so, sort of has a, a, a Fisher vibe to it. B captures on C6 and now Rook to D1 as Fisher very often gave up that, uh, that light square bishop uh, for the knight and uh, well, no one was safe in that variation. Not in this particular variation but there were occasions where Fisher did it. Rook to E8 uh, and now queen si uh, kingside castles even though Fisher uh, really loved his light square bishop and he often kept it safe for the, for, for the entire game. Uh, bishop to f6 offers a trade of bishops and now Hikaru plays c5. Uh, very nice um, uh, positional idea. Point is that uh, it seems that you can capture because now if bishop captures the queen will just capture. But you can also play bishop captures on c5 
open up an attack on the black queen and after the queen moves you could play bishop to d4. And now the problem is let's say bishop captures, rook captures and c5 you can play rook to d5. Attack the pawn here and if queen e6 goes after the e4 pawn you can just play rook to c1. And now if everything gets traded off let's say captures, captures, rook captures on e4, rook will capture on c5 and of course white is much better here. Yes material is equal but these two pawns are incredibly weak you are going to lose this pawn uh, next and uh, you know it's, it's going to start off uh, with uh, white being up a pawn and then might eventually be even up two pawns so instead after c5 we have rook to c6 a rook to e6 by samuel now comes bishop captures on f6 queen captures and here he caught trades queen captures but now not rook captures we have g captures uh probably with idea of advancing f5 and trading for the uh, e4 pawn so f3 by hikaru now rook to b8 putting pressure on the b2 pawn hikaru defends it rook to f2 now rook to b5 goes after the c5 pawn this is how samuel gains activity for his rooks rook to c2 and now d captures on c5 the problem is if rook captures then hikaru just trades and you're left with a, a tripled pawn here the, uh, it's very unlikely that you will be able to, to survive this game so instead after rook to c2 we have d captures on c5 still a tripled pawn uh, but now Hikaru gets rook to d7 it's a tripled pawn but there are uh, two rooks in the game uh, or rather two pairs of rooks in the game so it's a bit more dynamic and now we have rook to d6 uh, the problem with a move like rook to b7 just defending the pawn is that you can play rook to d8 check king to g7 and now shift the rook over to a8 going after the a6 pawn and if rook to b6 then look at those rooks they're, they're just terrible rooks uh, let's say uh, b3 rook to e5 king f2 king is coming to e3 three and the white is much much better here so hikaru uh, really applying a nice positional squeeze here we have rook to d6 instead and now rook captures on c7 uh, grabbing back the pawn we have pawn to c4 now trying to give up the c4 pawn for the b2 pawn but hikaru just starts bringing the king into the game we have rook to b6 and now king to e3 king to g7 and now rook to a7 we have rook to d3 with check but even king to f4 and even though uh okay the material is equal but hikaru has two pawn islands and samuel has four pawn islands uh not only that he has a uh, uh, two sets uh, of doubled pawns we have rook to d4 and now pawn to h4 hikaru can now take all the time in the world to improve his position as much as possible because samuel's rooks are just stuck in a very bad place king to g6 pawn to h5 check even this is possible to, to try to gobble up the f7 pawn king g7 now comes rook to a8 we have pawn to h6 preventing any h uh, h6 from hikaru in the future and now pawn to a4 preparing a5 to get the rook uh, off of the defense of the a6 pawn so c5 you need the the sixth rank to, to be able to defend the pawn from there a5 and now rook to c6 we have rook to b8 this is a beautiful move by hikaru now uh, the idea is uh, either you play rook to b6 you you trade off uh, the rooks create a fast pawn then this rook has to go back and um, uh, by that time this rook uh, will just gobble up all of the pawns on the c file or you will bring the king back trade off this rook for this rook and then go for rook to b6 so uh, there are many many ways to play this we have king to h7 samuel really without uh, any active plan he just has to wait and see what happens king to e3 we have king to g7 now king to e2 we have rook to e6 now trying to get f5 in but hikaru of course stops at pawn to g4 we have rook to c6 and now rook to d2 trying to trade off um, uh, this rook so you can play this fancy rook to b6 move uh rook to c7 now uh, and here comes rook to b6 going after the pawn so rook c to d7 now threatening rook captures on d2 and okay hikaru has to trade now captures captures and the rook captures on a6 hikaru grabs the pawn but okay samuel also has now c and the d pawn and d pawn is now a passed pawn but rook to c7 he is looking to advance the pawn to c3 now rook to d6 by hikaru attacks the d4 pawn we have rook to b7 now goes after the b2 pawn and hikaru blocks rook to b6 rook back to c7 of course samuel hoping for a repetition but not likely hikaru advances the pawn to a6 c3 we have captures on c3 and now rook rook captures on c3 well you're probably expecting b capture uh, d captures on c3 it's not much better because king d1 c2 check king c1 there's no way to advance the pawn and rook b7 is coming and if you move the rook then just rook a uh, king captures on c2 uh, off uh, off goes the pawn 
So rook captures and c3 was played. This still keeps everything in the game. Also puts pressure on f3. But now Hikaru just plays a7. And now, of course, you cannot promote. You cannot uh, allow queening. You have to prevent it by playing rook to a3. Rook to b7. And now rook to e3 with check. Hikaru can go uh, to d2. You don't have to worry about the f pawn because a8 queen. So rook goes back. Rook to a3. And now rook to c7. We have pawn to f5. The problem is uh, now uh, Samuel is in a total Tsukswang. Uh, there's nothing he can do. You cannot move the rook away from the third rank because you allow king d3 and king captures. You cannot uh, move the king uh, away from the defense of the f7 pawn because rook captures. You cannot play the king to the back rank because a rook c8 check follows by, uh, uh, followed by just uh, promoting a pawn to a queen. You can't go here. This is covered by the pawn. So the only thing left is f5. It's not much, but it, it's the only move he has. Pawn to e5 by Hikaru, now preparing e6 to gobble up the f7 pawn. f captures on g4, we have f captures on g4, and he was in this position on move 52 that Samuel Sevian resigned the game uh, as there was nothing more to be done here. Uh, the problem is, for those of you who are interested um, in how the game might uh, have finished if it was continued, let's say you, you throw in a couple of checks because throwing in checks is basically the only thing black has. Hikaru will eventually gobble up the d4 pawn, let's say rook to e4 with check, king to c5, rook to e5, we check king to b6, now you have to go back, and now just pawn to e6, this settles it, rook to b1, check, you will throw in a few more checks, king to c uh, king to b7, rook to b1, check, king to c8, now again you have to stop promotion, but now pawn to e7, and now this pawn promotes, so you are, you are getting a queen, and then you will checkmate the black king. Uh, but yeah, after this F captures and G4 move, uh, Sam, uh, Samuel had enough, and uh, Hikaru is the only one to win a game uh, in the uh, in the in the first round of the American Cup, and uh, he doesn't advance right away to the semifinals because, like I said, two classical games will be played, and only if it's a draw, then we go into rapid into Armageddon and so on. But now Hikaru only needs a draw, and he will uh, he will be victorious. If you're interested in the other pairs, uh, Levon Arinan drew against Linier Dominguez Perez, Wesley So drew against Sam Shanklin, and Fabiano Caruana drew his game against Ray Robson. Uh, so that's it for the uh, for the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And yeah, if you guys are interested in the Kasparov interview, first link in the description below. Uh, so uh, yeah, I would like to thank uh, Peter Gebertson, uh, Matthew Benoit, uh, Andrea Buketlia, uh, Frank Ploy, and uh, Paul Hinamund for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions, but also following up on the American Cup and how it, um, you know, just uh, uh, evolves. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your weekend.